Let's get started. Get ready to separate reality from myth. Joining me right now is Sound Income Strategies founder and CEO David Scranton. They've created a new type of inflation. And although the markets have always been an emotional place, they seem to be even more of an emotional place these days. Jeff a. Small, market watcher, is with me. Stock market dynamic is getting ready to significantly change. So let's bring in our co-host, Jeff Small, president of Arbor Financial Services and also the brand ambassador for the Retirement Income Store. And right now it's time to welcome my good friend and co-host Jeff Small, president of Arbor Financial Services, a retirement income store in Melbourne, Florida. Jeff's also the author of the Amazon best-selling book, turning financial planning right side up. Jeff, I have to admit, and this may sound funny on Valentine's Day, but I kind of miss you. You know, we went out fishing two weekends in a row and we missed last weekend. How did that happen? That's all right, Dave. I'm going to see you this weekend down in the Keys so we can make up for lost time there. That's right. <laughs> there you go. I love it. All right. We also want to take an opportunity to bring in our guests, an old friend of the income generation from three or four years ago, Samuel and Kirsty O'Banner. We met the O'Banners a few years ago when they came through one of our income specialists, Michael Eastham, who's based in Orlando, Florida. They appeared on Fox Business with Michael, and they talked about their plans to marry and to get out of debt. When we first had them on our show in 2018, they had achieved both of their goals and even founded Fresh Start Education. And we're excited to catch up with them on today's show. So tell me, first of all, I hope you're both still debt free, right? Yes, very much so. And All right. We're glad to be here, David. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks for having us. Lots of couples start out today. They have no idea how to accumulate, how to get organized. Give us the best tips for our viewers and our listeners, especially a lot of the viewers that we have are older, younger, in the middle age range for their kids. They want advice to be able to share with them. What's the one or two tips you can give them for folks to get started on how to start accumulating wealth? Yeah, I think we think that one of the primary things you have to do is first, uh, you know, if you're married, budget together, you know, keep unity is important and you get two people on the same page you can make huge progress if you're single still have a plan so the first thing is having a plan you got to keep your end goal in mind right right and definitely eliminating debt when we talk about building wealth Jeff yeah. I mean eliminating debt because it's just going to rob you of your ability to accumulate wealth if everything you're making is you know going out the window so eliminate yeah. debt as quickly as possible um you know, looking into some, you know, smart investment opportunities and um, really starting there, we think for sure. How do you guys keep score? You've paid off your mortgage, which is epic. The number one concern for retirees when they retire is to have a home that's debt free because that's peace of mind. And we don't want to minimize our expenses and maximize our income. And you guys are doing a great job of that. But how do we keep score in the meantime? How do you guys track to meet your goals on a regular basis based on what you're, how you're organized? How do you keep score? I think it just all boils down to working together. And periodically, we have meetings frequently. To every two weeks. <laughs> every two weeks to discuss our financial goals. Budget meetings. <laughs> you know, we have the long-term goals. And then we back into it with more short-term goals. Mm -hmm. And we just keep each other accountable. And so there's constant conversations about things. And, you know, we, we, we try not to look at what anybody else is doing. And we stay focused in our lane and what we're our goals together as a family. Right. So if you don't put time and effort into it, you're not going to get the result. It requires management. It requires punctual management and punctual reviews. That's what I hear you saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have to stay on top of it every every two weeks. Again, we're looking at the budget. We're looking at what's going out, what's coming in, projecting, you know, for the next two weeks out and even sometimes a little further than that. But definitely keeping an eye on it and stay working in it very often. So, Kirsty, what I want to know, though, is what happens when Samuel is bad and he's done something like spent a little too much money? What do you do to him? Well, believe it or not, it's probably you should probably be asking him that about me. <laughs> Oh, it's funny. Dave mentioned the, the sports car uh, question. I actually want the sports car. You know, Samuel's a simple guy. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get him to get rid of his Toyota Camry anytime soon. <laughs> but to answer your question, Jeff, um, you know, we have, again, 
we we're, we're big advocates about budgeting together, but we do still have discretionary spending that we allocate in the budget to be able to do the things that we both, you know, want to do or choose to do. And yeah. so, you know, we kind of do our own thing in some ways, but we do agree on those amounts. And from there, it's, you know, kind of free reign. I love it. And it's so great to have you two back on the show. Um, as I said three years ago, I'll say it again. Samuel and Kirsty O'Banner, my favorite Irish couple in the whole world. <laughs> Thanks so much for being back here with us. And again, happy Valentine's Day. Now it's time to bring back my co-host, Jeff Small, as well as our next guest, a good friend of the income generation, Joanne Regan, president of Financial Security Group, a retirement income store in Glendale, Arizona. Joanne's been helping clients with tax, estate, and retirement planning now for over 30 years. Joanne, it's great to have you back on the show looking all festive for Valentine's Day. Well, Dave, thank you. It's great to be here and happy Valentine's Day to you and Jeff. What is the greatest misconception for retirees that are married in their early 60s thinking about getting their will and trust done? What is the one question that they always seem to ask or have a misunderstanding about? I would say the biggest thing, the biggest misconception that I run into with my clients is they come in and they want to do a will. And they think that if they have a will, it doesn't have to go through probate. And they don't understand that a will by its very nature is a directive to the court telling the court what they want to have happen. So all wills will go through probate and people don't understand that. They think that just because they've done something that it doesn't have to go through the court. Besides avoiding probate, which we know is you know a charge for assets that we have, what other documents should complete a good estate plan? What other things do you need besides a living trust that helps you avoid probate? I think the most important document that every person should have is a financial power of attorney form in place. Because if you become incapacitated or you cannot make your own decisions, you want to allow someone to be able to pay your bills, take care of your assets and make sure that everything goes according to your wishes. And if you don't have that in place, someone is gonna end up having to petition the court in order to be able to take care of your things. And it's extremely costly and very time consuming. So planning is important in this instance, having those documents in place are gonna really save your family a lot in the long run. Agreed. Healthcare surrogates are also very good too, or powers of attorney for healthcare. They complement the financial side of the equation. So, but when we look at what our clients have for assets, they have tangible assets, which really is real estate. They have intangible, which really is going to be their investment accounts. It could be their IRAs, their savings, their bank accounts. Do those things all need to be tied up into a trust to avoid probate or are there, are there other ways to avoid probate with some of those intangible assets? Certainly. With intangible assets, you can always name a beneficiary, although there are pitfalls in naming beneficiaries as well, because if something happens to a beneficiary, and you, again, you don't have a backup, then it's going to end up in the court. So being, being thorough in your estate planning is going to be what's going to make it be successful. You really, really have to think through everything and working with someone who is going to ask you the right questions and make sure that you think your plan all the way through is going to be what's gonna make it work. Joanne, once again, great having you here. Thanks so much for being here with us. And you stay with us too. We're coming back. We got more about estate planning. We're gonna wrap it up and put a bow on it for Valentine's Day in a moment on the Income Generation. We'll be right back. 